Hey, what's going on? Nick Unsworth here from lifeonfire.com and this episode is all about how to master the art of storytelling because here's the thing, storytelling, once you master this, it actually can help you rewrite the past. So if you have challenges in your past, you're going to learn how you can harness your biggest challenges, your biggest obstacles, and actually rewrite all that into your biggest opportunities. And so once you nail your story, that becomes your stance. Once you nail your stance, that is your message out there to the world and to your audience. And what you'll find is that by nailing the art of storytelling, you're actually able to attract those perfect clients to you and bring on that abundance. So check it out. Hey, what's going on? Nick Unsworth here, and I'm a kick business coach and I'm on an absolute mission to help you find your purpose in life, to help you love what you do for work every single day, to help you be the rock star that you are meant to be, to make more money than you ever thought was possible, and to have more time freedom so you can actually enjoy the life that you're living. I'm here to help you set your life on fire. All right, so here's the thing. So as I share with you details about how you can master the art of storytelling, I'm actually going to be sharing this all in a story, of course. So here's the thing. So for me as a business coach, I do what's called a VIP day. And what that means is I sit down with someone virtually or in person for four hours. In that four hour block, what we do is we go through and we just break down their story, what their stance is, and we help build the strategy moving forward. And out of all the things that I do in my, in my life as a business coach, this is the most powerful because I could give you the most impactful you know, Facebook advertising plan or give you a YouTube marketing strategy or give you all these assets, but if you don't nail your purpose and if you don't have your story and have your stance and come up with a strategy and all that rolls into just your purpose with your business, if you don't have that, what ends up happening, you can have the best strategy in the world and it's not gonna matter. And so the thing is that I always start with story. And here's what I find, is that when we drill down in, into someone's story, we always find that every single person is unique. Every single person just like you has a unique story. And within that story, there's all kinds of crazy challenges and crazy roadblocks. And there's more things in there that are relatable to others than you may realize. And so when you take, if you were to take a big piece of paper or tape pieces of paper together and create a timeline, in order to go through and literally just go all the way from when you were a little kid and jot down life experiences all the way up into the present moment, what you start to do is you start to recall things and you realize that, wow, what happened there when I was a kid actually shaped why I chose that major in college and that impacted the next thing, which impacted the next thing, all rolling up to, t to today. And what's so interesting is that when I'm helping in a, an entrepreneur that wants to really you know, get their message out there and, and they want to help people and they want to create a, a conscious business, then we're always looking back to the story because in the story leaves all these clues. And so the thing is that when I drill down into someone's stories, I always find that their biggest challenges, the things that for some people can haunt them their entire lives, end up being the biggest blessings. They end up being the biggest opportunities moving forward. And so the cool thing is that this can be very liberating because when you go back in the past and you look at all the things that happened, you can actually reframe and reassociate things that have happened and turn them from a negative into a positive. And so there's all kinds of cases of this. Um, one of my mentors, Michael Burnoff, he'll take someone on the stage and in 10 minutes, he'll figure out and why they're depressed or why they are just broken and just you know in a, in a rough spot. And what will happen is that he'll find out, okay, so if someone was, let's say, um, as awful as this is, if they were molested when they were a kid, all of that has all these impacts in life and all this baggage and all the stuff that they carry emotionally and how it's kind of uh, guided their lives. And he can go back and just, just take a look at that and cut that one piece and reframe it so that all of that past experiences, all that stuff ends up getting rewritten in, in that person's mind so that they can have happiness in the present moment. But what's interesting is that not only mastering the art of storytelling can it be great to just overcome past challenges, but the other thing is that that becomes your core message in your business. And when you have that core message, that's what people connect with you on. That's what they relate to, and that's what's going to attract them into your business. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to share a story about one of my clients, um, Karen Fagan, and I'm going to share the story of how we met and what happened on this VIP day and what her story is. And then you're gonna hear from her at the end as well. So it's really cool. And how it happened is um, when I sat down with her in person, she actually flew into town and, uh, 
And I asked, so, so I'm like, so Karen, so how did this happen? How did we end up working together at my highest level? It's called Firestarter Elite. It's a 36,000 dollars program. And I'm like, so how did all this happen? And she's like, you know, she's like, it actually happened because uh, I think one of her friends forwarded a video that I made. And in the video, I, I was sharing something crazy. I think it was, um, oh, it was actually, I had a, uh, a kidney stone. And I don't know why the heck did this happen, but I had a kidney stone and I passed it. And I went from being in excruciating pain to like feeling like a million bucks, right? And so I don't know what was going on, but I was so happy that I, I like made a selfie video and I'm like, this is the craziest thing. I'm like, I literally just passed a kidney stone. I didn't even know I had one. I was in excruciating pain and I made this video and, and it was a weird video, mind you, right? And somehow like someone thought it was funny. So she ends up seeing it and she's thinking, this guy's crazy. And she watched the video and I mentioned something about God in there and there was a connection. And then she just started watching other videos. Next thing you know, we end up on the phone and she's like, I want to work with you. I'm ready. And here's where I want to go. So we end up sitting down for this VIP day. Now, when we sit down in the VIP day, we're face to face and we start drilling down into her background story and see it. And so, you know, everyone wants to think about their story as like, oh, just the past couple of years. And I was like, no, we want to go way back. We want to figure out what happened, you know, as a little girl, what happened as a young adult, what happened that led you to this point? Because all of those things that matters in your story. And if we can end today and have what's called the hero's journey, which is, is where you were, all the struggles you went through, and then how you get, how'd you get to where you are, that journey and sharing that story with your audience, that's actually what is gonna build the connection. And if you just tell that, that's gonna build your tribe and that's gonna build up your audience. And what she does is she does life coaching and um, she's like a relationship expert with women and she helps them change their lives. And I was like, I would bet that in your story, you have some gems in there that would radically change your business if you just shared those. So we go way back and it's a very, um, uh, personal type of thing where you kind of almost have to, to let down your guard and, and, and be vulnerable. Sometimes people think in their minds, well, if I'm going to share my story, then I only want to share the good parts. And that's the worst thing that you can do. When you share your story, you want to authentically just share exactly what happened. You know, for me, I'm a business coach, yet in my story, most of my 20s, I failed. And I was in debt, near bankruptcy, multiple times. Now, as a business coach, I could look at that and say, Ooh, I want to hide that part of my life. But instead, I just authentically share it because that's, that's just real. I mean, that's what happened to me. And who better to help someone get out of debt than a guy that was there multiple times and then I kicked butt and got out of it. So with her, we went all the way back and we dug deep. And I do have you know, permission for, for Karen to share this story because it is intense because every one of our stories, your story, it's intense. There's secrets in there. There's skeletons in those closets that, um, that are very liberating when you vocalize them. A lot of healing can come from forgiveness. A lot of healing can come from, you know, sharing your past experiences and stories and, and, and getting over things in the past that you regret or things that you're not proud of, right? And what's interesting is that in business as an online entrepreneur, that those stories create connections with others. So we go way back. And I'm like, tell me about, you know, Karen Fagan as a little girl, you know, what, you know, what was going on? Like, what was it like growing up? And she's like, okay, okay. so, She's like, all right, so as a little girl, I, uh, I just, I grew up and I just, I just had big visions and dreams and she always thought as a little girl that she was here for a real reason. And think about you. I mean, have you ever had that experience where you just feel like you don't know what it is, but you just feel like you're meant to do something in this world, in this lifetime? Um, I know that that's what I felt when I was a kid and yet I knew, I didn't know what it was, but I just felt that calling or that prompting that it was something. And so she had that feeling inside of her. I had no idea what. So her, her uh, parents um, were just, I mean, they were making the best decisions that they could with what they were given. And, you know, turns out they were, you know, pretty bad alcoholics and there just wasn't as much love and nurturing, you know, that a little girl like that needs. And, you know, she kind of describes some of these situations and, you know, grew, growing up hearing things like you're a piece of shit, you know, and growing up hearing that. And, um, and what that would do to you as a little girl or just, or a little girl, a little boy, right. And just in hearing that over and over and, and the parents being alcoholics and blacking out and not remembering what they're saying and things. And, and so just not getting the love and they just weren't emotionally available. And so from that situation as a little girl, how does that impact her life moving forward? Well, it's no surprise that in high school, she was attracting men and people around her that were emotionally unavailable too. 
and she wasn't getting that love and nurturing and so she ended up in some bad relationships in high school and just was depressed and unhappy and you know fast forward to getting into like college and things and she just she just wasn't happy she still knew that she was meant to do something but her parents just never believed in her and she wanted to be a dancer like a child psychologist and they just said things like you know they, they didn't think she'd ever be capable or you'd never be able to do that and so as she you know got older um you know, she ended up again attracting people that were just emotionally unavailable. And, you know, for a woman and just hearing this, you know, from her, um, of course, I do the story no justice. But when she started to share some very, you know, um, very deep things that were, you know, um, sharing her vulnerability on these things, you can imagine that this is, it's a big deal. So she started sharing that, you know, she was just so emotionally unavailable and so unloved that, you know, she started dating a married man. And I think, you know, in that situation, that's not good for a million reasons, right? And how does she view that now? I mean, how much does she feel guilty about that and, and what have you? So she harbored a lot of guilt and a lot of like shame from that. She went from that relationship to then being in a relationship with another married man, but he had a family and she was the other woman, right? She was the other you know, the, 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 uh, the outsider, the woman you have an affair with, right? She was that woman. And that's not a cool place to be. I mean, you know, she was dating her confidence or her self-esteem, if you will. And so she was in a bad spot and she, you know, was depressed and, and even suicidal and that you would call that the rock bottom. So here in, as far as storytelling goes, you know, many of us, we have journeys where it's somewhere low and then there's a, oftentimes there's a rock bottom, then somewhere there's a turning point and then there's the ascension up, ideally the ascension up. Now everyone's story is different, but um, in Karen's case, it's a nice, you know, comes up and, there, and it crescendos, which is good. And so we start going through it and realize that, you know, she's at a spot where she was just really just at, at the end, at the rock bottom and just, just down and out and depressed. And what happened is she ended up um, getting pregnant. And what's really wild is that in that relationship with that married man, I mean, it was a very short lived, just a couple days and she ended up getting pregnant. And it, it was at that point where, I mean, imagine all of just the, the things going through your mind, like, you know, married man and all these, all these different things. And what ended up happening is that she had to make a decision. She could take the easy way out or she could take responsibility and, and make that commitment, you know, and, and start her family on her own. And so she made a, the right decision. She, you know, uh, took that on, you know, had her baby. And I mean, she was going to bed at 8.30 at night and waking up at 1.30 in the morning so that she could study and put herself through school and do all of these things. And she was just on fire. She ended up, you know, going to a career counselor and saying, oh, I, I want to be a life coach. And like, this is what her passion was. And thinking that there's something inside of her that she wanted to share with other people and help people. And that counselor, just like her parents when she was a little girl said, You're, you'll never be able to do it. You know, you don't have this and that. So everyone was kept you know, telling her no and telling her no. And so as she kept going through, she just felt like she was almost didn't have the courage to step into what she really wanted to do. And I think for many of us, I know that it took me a while to have the courage to start you know, this business. I kept hiding, in my case, I kept hiding with business partners. That was, that was an avoidance mechanism for me where I would always latch onto a business partner so I didn't have to have the full accountability. In Karen's case, she was with the wrong relationships and she you know, was in jobs that she didn't really have to stand out. And so she knew she wanted to do something, but she kept hiding. And then from there, she ends up meeting, meeting a man, end up getting married, and she ends up in a situation where, you know, again, he wasn't really emotionally available. He kept saying that, you know, she wasn't going to, he didn't really believe in what she was doing. She did start doing the life coaching and it wasn't really, you know, panning out. She wasn't making much money. And so she just had all these struggles and all these struggles. And then she invests in herself. She hires a coach, you know, 2000 bucks a month, month. And imagine for her, her, her uh, ex-husband, I mean, he did not support that decision. It was just like, you know, 2000 bucks a month. And she said to herself, if I make that decision, hire that coach, I know, and she said, I know if I just make that first payment, that everything's going to shift and everything's going to change. And she did. She made a decision and then she made it right. And so she just dove in and that part of her story, that's a turning point where she invested in herself and then something shifted. If you saw the last episode of Life on Fire TV, episode 125 with Eric Yang, one book radically changed this dude's life. One book changed everything in his story everything shifted. And so for her investing in herself, that shifted. She got the mentor. She started doing better with her, with her life coaching business. 
and she started training and she ran, um, started getting into her fitness and she started running and, you know, she ended up training and running a, uh, a less than a six minute mile. And it was like one of those little things where she realized that, you know, if I can run a less than a six minute mile, that she does have all this potential. So she started believing more and believing more, but she was still hiding from her true potential. You know, the husband that she had at the time kind of kept that suppressed. And then there was one day that she came home and came home and was walking down the hallway and her intuition started kicking on and she just felt this crazy eerie feeling and she's walking down the hallway and she noticed that her husband had completely moved out and he had taken all this stuff and just completely moved out and was just gone and the only thing left was a note i mean he even took the chip out of his phone and just pff, gone and at that moment it's like imagine how many thoughts would be going through your mind you come home you're like hey honey and then it's like honey you know what i mean like imagine how messed up that is and just how devastating and to come home and just everything's gone and you know the income that he had and all these things and there was just a note on the bed and she describes it as being in in like a state of shock where just like your body going into shock and just the feeling of that and just like like just hitting you emotionally and physically and she grabs a letter reads the letter and it goes on to say things like you're just a dreamer you know you're never going to do you know, you're never going to make it in this business you're just a dreamer and all this stuff and again just like before when she had a decision making there's two options she, she could you know take the easy way out or she could just you know dot, go straight at it and just um, and just build her business and grow. I mean, you could take that situation and you could let it just ruin you and be a victim. So her choice was she could take the easy way out and just be a victim and let that situation ruin her and be a bad role model for her child and just be devastated or she could lean into that. So her biggest challenge is also now blossoming into being her biggest opportunity, which is one of the themes for many entrepreneurs, many people like you. If you think about your story in this way, in this hero's journey, a lot of us have these turning points where then we have an upswing, right? And so it was at that, at that point where she took all of this energy that was devastating and she just reframed it. And she looked at it and said, she has to do something. She has to commit, make a decision. And she spun it all around and said, you know what? I'm gonna prove him wrong. I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna crush this business. I'm gonna be a role model for my child and for women all over. And she took that note and then went on in less than 30 days. In less than 30 days, she made $75,000. She doubled her prices. She went out and took on clients. She started attracting clients. $75,000 in 30 days. She absolutely crushed. She had never even made close to that. It was beyond record breaking for her. And part of how that happened it was just her tenacity to flip around, prove, prove him wrong. And she replaced more than the income that he brought in anyway. And it was at that moment where she just was like, you know what, I can do this. She came out from hiding, right? And from just settling. And she just fully stepped into the greatness that she has to offer. And how many people do we know, do you know that that's a situation where there's a fear, there's something holding you know you back from the business you want to start or what you want to do. As a, as a business coach, I help people overcome that all the time in these VIP days because that's what unlocks somebody. So she took that experience, went on, started crushing it in business and just, just took off. She started soaring. And from that situation, she ends up, you know, seeing the, uh, her friend sent the, you know, the kidney stone video. She ends up meeting me somehow and we just connected and we end up at the table where she shared this story. And I asked her and I was like, you know, like, how often do you share that? You know, how often do you share this story? And she wasn't sharing this story. She was kicking butt with her business, just sharing like tiny little pieces of her story. And what's wild is that when I went through this storytelling, the master of the art of storytelling, this process with her, it flipped her out. And you'll hear from Karen at the end, but it, it radically changed how she thinks of her past. And instead of like shame or guilt, it's actually liberating because she can proudly say the things that happened that it's like, I mean, I said some bold stuff that is her story, you know, with permission. And that is stuff that people would never want to say about themselves, right? You're admitting major faults, right? And we all have them, but... For her to authentically share that story, 
and share the upswing and going out, making the $75,000, building a business, and now her entire business revolves around helping women and helping them just to totally grow, come out from hide hiding, grow their self-esteem, confidence, and crush it in business. And you know, attract the mate of their dreams, that uh, their soulmate, and someone that's gonna love them for who they are and all this good stuff. So she's doing amazing things. And so what's wild is that we end up sitting down and so now I'll pick this story up where um, after she tells me all this and I was like, all right, so, you know, if you were to take that and harness that and let's drill down into that messaging, you know, you can take that story and share it with other people and it's going to take your business to another level. And so we started drilling down from that point and said, so, but to do so, we need to get really clear on where you want to spend your time. And this question is is the one that sets everyone free. And the question was, Karen, what would you do if I handed you a check for $100 million and you paid off all your bills, you had given away more money than you could ever imagine, and you had, you had nothing to worry about. And out of all the things you could do in your business, you're spending your time over here with these level clients and it doesn't, you know, it wasn't lighting her up. And, and I was like, well, where would you spend your time? And so she was like, I don't know, I would do this, this, and this. And then I kept prodding with this question. I was like, I'm like, no, I'm like, so let's think about it. Let's really get in the state and think if money was no issue, what would you do if you didn't have to worry about getting paid? I mean, what lights you up and what would inspire you so much? Like, how would you serve these women, you know, in your target market? How would you help them? And all of a sudden she just totally lights up. And she starts painting a picture and she's like, oh my God, Nick, can I tell you? And I'm like, yes, you can tell me. She's like, oh my God. She's like, I would, I would, I would go to Paris and I would do this retreat and it would be about, you know, food and it would be about culture and art and, you know, getting our nails done and, and having this amazing experience with powerful women that are, that are smart and, and sexy and, and, and all on the same page and have a mastermind in Paris. And I was like, that's it. I'm like, that's Operation Paris. I'm like, why wouldn't you just focus on that? If that's your dream job and that's what you would love to do, what if you just focused on that? And she, the first thing that happened is she said, oh, pff, there's no way I could just focus on that. And what happens is that for all of us, whenever we come up with what is that dream job or the, the perfect work situation look like, or what would you do if money was no issue, usually that's met with a lot of resistance. So she instantly was like, she's like, oh, I could never just do that. And I was like, well, why not? Give me the reasons why not. And so she started shouting out these reasons and every single one I just picked off and it was like, none of these are actual true reasons. Those are just limiting beliefs and helped to realize that out of all the things that she could do, if she put her focus on what she would love to do the most, how much that would actually serve people even more and she would make more money, she would help more people and she'd have more fun. And that's what life on fire is. And so from that situation, she all of a sudden just got fired up. And she's like, all right, well, we started thinking about, well, how am I gonna market this? How am I gonna get the right women there? And then she was like, once we, she got in that state, it's like once you nail your story and you figure out your purpose moving forward, guess what happens? The how always shows up. So when it looked so impossible for her, in that moment, 10 minutes later, she's like, oh my God, Nick. She's like, I know Patty Stanger, the millionaire matchmaker. How does that fit in? And I was like, well, I was like, you know, could you do an event with her? Could you do a live webinar? So next thing you know, she has a live webinar that she's doing with Patty Stanger, the millionaire matchmaker, who has a huge mega brand. I mean, she's a big time celebrity. So you've got Karen and Patty and put their faces together. And now that's a webinar where they're teaching women about all kinds of really cool stuff. And then they're going from that live webinar training to a live event in LA that Patty's gonna be there, Karen's gonna be there, and Karen is there in her power where she's not at a different status level than Patty, Karen's the star at the event. And Patty's there helping her uh, as basically as a mentor and, and having some stage time and things. But really, Karen is the star. And what does that do for Karen's brand? That takes her to a totally different level. She's running ads with Patty's face and women in LA, women all over the world, can see Karen for this rock star that is positioned next to a major major celebrity like that. And so that is happening very soon, um, just coming up actually in LA. I'm gonna be heading up there just to help her with the event. It's gonna be super, super cool. But that situation went from, um, I mean, think of just where the story ended up. It went from, you know, little girl, 
being called a piece of shit, all the way to you know putting on an event with Patty Stanger and empowering and liberating women and helping women overcome their challenges in their past. So the moral of the story is when you take someone and or you take your your background, draw the timeline, look at all the different pieces and components, and what you may find if you're like me or like many entrepreneurs is that some of your biggest challenges that in some cases, some people get over them, some people it haunts them, but your biggest challenges are actually your biggest gifts. And those gifts can be leveraged into your message and then that message can really inspire other people and help them. And so what's cool is that her event is going to help set a lot of women free. Her event, she's gonna share her story and has been sharing her story and it really liberates a lot of women. And then from there, She's going to be picking up her clients and they're going to be going to Paris. She already knows the dates and all that good stuff. So it's a heck of a story and I'm really excited for you for you to master the art of storytelling and just to start thinking about what's your story. You know, if you don't like the way your story is being written now, you've got the full freedom where, you know, whatever has happened up to date, that's, that's all well and good. You have the pen in your hand, you've got the paper and you get the ability to write the rest of your story. So make your story awesome. Super excited for you to do the timeline exercise. And then what I want you to do is to think about how you can leverage that in your business. You know, how does that change things from your past? How can you connect with your audience on a deeper level? And so the only other thing I'd like to share before we hop off, um, you will, I, I do have a really cool little uh, bit from Karen where she's gonna share some feedback about the story. She's such an amazing woman, so definitely make sure you stay on to hear that. Uh, but before I go, I wanna share with you um, that whole experience is, is part of me sitting down with Karen. I call that the VIP day. So that was a four hour chunk. We sat down, we mapped all this stuff out. And if you're hearing me right now and you're, and you're watching the video and you're like, you know what, man, I really need someone to help me with my story. I need to get clear on my messaging or branding or I'm overwhelmed and I need to put the pieces together. And it's, you know, if you're in that spot, whether it be overwhelmed or maybe you just walked away from a job. I've got lots of people that reach out and like, Nick, I had a big old six figure job. I just walked away. I'm ready to reinvent. You're my guy. So if that's you, if you're in a transition or you feel like you've been hiding like Karen or you've, you haven't been letting your potential you know, come out and you're ready to make that shift or next move, then I've got a sweet situation with VIP days. This, for me, I've been doing them almost every single day since January 1st, 2015. And I, I love it. I feel like it's what my gift is um, just here on this earth is, is to help people figure out that purpose and story. So if that's you, I've got a very awesome special going on uh, for this month and it's gonna actually be closing on uh, March, uh, March 5th. And basically my VIP days are normally 10,000 bucks and I'm doing a special with her half off at 5,000 bucks. And I wanna keep doing this. I wanna keep creating success stories from that VIP day. So it's 5,000 bucks. And if you have an interest and you're looking at, so you know what? I'm ready to make a shift. I'm ready for the next step. You know, I, I always like to say, if it's not now, when's it gonna be? So if, you, if that's you, then just reach out to support at lifeonfire.com, pop in your phone number, and then put in a subject line, VIP day. So just email support at lifeonfire.com and, uh, and just write VIP day, put in your phone number, and myself or one of my trained coaches will hop on the phone and you know we'll talk about how we can help you and if it's right for you. And if it's right, I'd love to work with you. And if not, all good. I hope this session really helped about storytelling and helped clarify things. And uh, looking forward to catching up with you very soon. And now we'll roll the tape and uh, check out what Karen's got for us. Hi, everyone. It's Karen Fagan of feelamazingnow.com. And I want to share with you the coaching experience that I'm having with Nick Unsworth. So Nick and I started our coaching together in a VIP day. And I want to tell you a little bit about where I was in my business before the VIP day and what's happened for me since the VIP day. So I was doing, you know, pretty well in my business, but I was super stuck. And so here's how I can describe it. I was wanting to go to the next level and I had all these pieces of my business, almost like pieces of a puzzle that I could not pull together. And I tried. And um, I also was not waking up feeling like full of energy and on fire. And um, so Nick and I met for our VIP day and I brought all my pieces that I could not put together. And here's what Nick helped me do. First of all, he helped me get really clear on 
what my dream is and um, showed me how possible it is for me to have this dream for my business. And the second thing that he did was all these pieces of the puzzle I had going on in my business, boom, he pulled those pieces together in a solid plan. So what we did is we mapped out a very specific 90 day plan. And so what that's done for me is it has re-energized me. I wake up feeling on fire again. I am so crystal clear about um, what I need to do in my business each day so that I actually meet the 90-day the goal plan. Also, um, Nick, you know, we did this coaching call on my story, and um, I really didn't know what my story was. Um, I knew that I am a powerful coach and I help people in a powerful way, but I really didn't understand my story and why I needed to know that and why it's important to get clear. And what I want to say to you is that um, Nick and I had this coaching call and he has literally blew my mind what we did in that coaching call about my story. And it has given me uh, like a total new um, confidence about who I am and my story and how it so fits into what I do in my coaching business. So here's what I want to say to you. If you have been stuck for three months, it's way too long. It is time for you to reach out to Nick and um, have a conversation with him. He is um, one of the most supportive coaches I have ever known. And his energy about his own business, his um, planning that he has to help you get to that place you want to go, it's brilliant. So what I want to say to you is that for me, um, coaching with Nick, it is taking my business and my brand to a whole nother level. And um, if it's something that you're wanting for yourself, don't hesitate and reach out to him today. I'm here to help you set your life on fire.